Hey, hey, happy weekend if you're watching this on the weekend. This is my new album, Dark Days Unfazed, available on CD and vinyl very shortly uh, via Fanatic Records, Punk Media, Ragged Records, and it's also available on all musical streaming platforms. Uh, please subscribe to the channel because uh, I'm going to be putting out a couple stories a week. Uh, the numbers have been going up. It's awesome. So tonight, uh, I want to go back to the year 2000. But before I do, and before I completely blow off Dark Days Unfazed, my new 13-song album, I want to shout out my friend Lynn Harrington, who is from Crux Jewelry in Davenport, Iowa, that part of Iowa, the Quad Cities of Illinois and Iowa there. It's these cool motorhead earrings, man, with the actual motorhead emblem, and you can see the little tusks. They're so really badass. Thank you, Lynn. Those are cool. Thank you, and shout out to Crux. C-R-U-X in Davenport, and no, that's not a paid advertisement. Um, tonight, we're going back to the year 2000. It's a radio tale. I had been doing radio for about a year, and then the radio station was bought out, and they called me eventually and said, we want to have you come back part-time on radio, and you can do your Church of Rock radio show on Sunday nights and all that good stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm in. So... Uh, it came to be December, almost Christmas time, very close to Christmas Eve of December, yeah, 2000. And I had a co-host at the time, Chaplain Chip V. Shout out, a great guy, funny as hell. And we used to do some funny stuff, man, and torment each other and play practical jokes on each other. Mostly me playing those on him, but it was always fun, and he took it in stride. Well, on this particular occasion, I got together with a man known as Jim the Photographer. So those familiar with uh, Central Illinois radio history and the Light of the Lamb uh, morning show, they would remember a guy named Jim the Photographer. He and I got together, decided let's get and set up Chaplain Chip V for Christmas and let's give him a gift and do it on the radio and pull like a stunt. And we decided to make this happen. So what we did was me and uh, Jim came and dressed up and he was a very wild guy, very, very bizarre. And I think he uh, is a dearly departed guy now. So rest in peace, Jim. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I think he's gone. Jim, love you, man, wherever you're at. But Jim, the photographer, came to the station in character, some weird, bizarre character, albeit, dressed up as Santa Claus, got on the radio and said, Hi, my name is Panty Claus. And it was bizarre because everything, he wouldn't break character. He's driving like a hearse. I think it was a hearse or some kind of weird, bizarre car that Chaplin Ship would probably remember. But we're on the radio live. I told Chaplin, it's your Christmas gift from me. It's from the Church of Rock radio show. And Jim, the photographer, you know, Panty Claus is going to take you downtown in Peoria and get your Christmas gift. He's like, okay, well... He's a single guy, and I thought, let's do this, man. He'll probably fall for it. And uh, we told him, you're going downtown. We've got a gift for you. They, you know, I played some music on the radio. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of cruising along. On the, he's calling me up. I'm putting him on the air live. And then finally, they're about halfway there. He's like, hey, Reverend, I'm almost downtown. What's the deal? Uh, I said, just, get, just go downtown and drive around for a bit. Tell me what's happening. He drives around for a bit. He says... After a couple blocks, he says there's a bunch of ladies of the night like working downtown, which, you know, it was a seedy part of Peoria with that kind of activity. Well, what happened was uh, a good friend of mine, a few of them that were actresses, kind of, they decided they would take on the part of being uh, like hookers or women of the night, even though they weren't. Uh, they were just like listeners of the show and friends. Well, they dressed the part, acted the part hung out downtown in the cold on December to do this radio stunt. And while Chaplin's talking to me on the phone, it's on the air, back and forth of this exchange about how I'm getting him a woman of the night, which is totally illegal. So I'm breaking all these uh, rules, not only of just ethically, but morally and probably on the FCC's rules. And it was just a, uh, <laughs> not a good thing, but it was extremely good radio at the time. So finally... Chaplain Chip starts talking to a certain one of the girls that so goes for it. She, he propositions her. The whole thing happens. And I don't even know if she maybe she propositioned him first. But bottom line, it was, it was on the radio broadcast live. And we were pulling this whole like 
theater of the mind thing off. And it was bizarre because next thing you know, this quote unquote woman of the night is getting in the car. You can hear him talking on the phone. It's becoming just crossing the line of decency. And she finally breaks, uh, doesn't break character, gets so into being this woman of the night. But really, here's the deal, folks. She was an undercover cop, we decided to make it be. So as soon as he accepted the proposition and got in the car with this girl, she's like, you're under arrest, buddy. Pulls out handcuffs, full-on handcuffs, Chaplain Chip V right there on the air. There's cussing going on. Now we're breaking more rules. I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to get me fired. And sure enough, man, the little hotline that you never want to see light up in the radio station, it's like a little red button whenever the boss is calling or something super important like a, like a hurricane, uh, it lights up. I'm like, oh, no. I go to uh, the the, uh, the freaking, um, you know, the music about a 30 seconds later after the girl and I reveal on the air that the whole thing's a setup and it was all a joke. Ha ha. Merry Christmas, Chaplain Chip from Derek Moody and the Church of Rock. Well, I finally did answer that hotline. And it was the funniest thing, man. It was my boss, Jamie Markley at Rock 106, saying... Through gritted teeth, I assure you. He was saying, Derek, that was a good one. <laughs> In other words, you were almost fired. He goes, you got me, man. You really do. That was great radio, but don't ever do that again. And so that was a stunt that we pulled off that at the time was ridiculously funny. Uh, I can't believe I didn't get fired for that and so many other infractions during my time and tenure in all the different radio stations that I have worked for. And there's eight of them now. Eight. God, I've got some crazy radio stories. But hey, man, thanks for checking this one out. Um, I've got better ones, and I'll have one up in a couple of two or three more days. Uh, in the meantime, rock and roll. Cheers.